Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma. Uh, our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with Path Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association. Our case today comes from the realm of GI pathology. The patient is a 65-year-old woman who has uh, been discovered to have what seems to be a mass in the gallbladder uh, that may be involving the liver. And so she's been referred for surgical, possible surgical evaluation and oncologic uh, consideration. Uh, of course, anytime we discover a mass in an organ like the gallbladder, the immediate concern is that this is going to be malignant. However, there are a number of things to uh, think about beyond malignancy. And so I thought it might be just useful to think first of the kinds of tumors we may see in the gallbladder, as well as to think about the non-neoplastic entities that may occur there. Uh, beyond garden variety adenocarcinomas or gas uh, of, of the usual type, we can also see neuroendocrine tumor and mixed neuroendocrine neoplasms, as well as occasional smooth muscle tumors, GI stromal tumors, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumors, and various other benign polyps or precursor polyps uh, and polypoid lesions, such as polypoid cholesterolosis, which can on occasion uh, reach a size of up to uh, several centimeters. The non-neoplastic lesions, of course, include stones, but usually these are readily identified by ultrasound. Uh, abscesses can occur in this area, including those that may be related to parasitic granulomata, uh, possibly due to liver flukes or other such things. And then various cystic lesions uh, have been mistaken for neoplasms, as these may not communicate with the uh, uh, lumen or may uh, develop uh, other changes. And then there are other inflammatory changes that can be seen as well. So I'm sure you're wondering what our case today uh, falls into. Here's the representative section. Um, and uh, maybe we'll just swing it over here so that we can look at it from the top down here. Here at the top uh, is our thickened gallbladder wall. We see strands of muscle here and an intact but inflamed uh, mucosa, as you can see, lots of uh, chronic inflammation and uh, a little bit of loss of mucin, but probably more related to uh, the inflammatory process. Of note here, we do not see uh, any component of invasive uh, neoplasm. So coming back to low power here, as we look into this uh, area here, we see a lot of uh, clear space some paler pink areas uh, that looks like it could be a diffuse uh, neoplasm. Uh, and so we'd want to look at this more closely. Uh, however, as we uh, come into this, uh, we can see that uh, the nuclei are not very striking and we have lots of uh, very foamy uh, vacuolated cytoplasm. So in reality, uh, what we're seeing here is a, a collection of foamy histiocytes um, in the uh, gallbladder wall. Uh, and this is uh, something that goes by the term of xanthogranulomatous uh, cholecystitis. Um, xanthoma, of course, referring to the foamy cells. Uh, and occasionally we'll see uh, little foreign body reactive cells. Like here, we have some multinucleate giant cells with obvious uh, crystal. Uh, ghost uh, remnants remaining in the cytoplasm where uh, they have engulfed uh, cholesterol crystals. So xanthoma, a little bit of granulomatous uh, reaction explains the name. And then of course, uh, neutrophils come along, uh, especially if there's been any disruption of the tissue uh, so that here we can occasionally see uh, areas where there's been a breakdown of the tissue uh, and more uh, potential acute inflammation, almost an abscess uh, type of thing, although it tends to be a sterile abscess uh, type of process. So the wall is drastically thickened, not by neoplasm in this case, but by this very uh, xanthomatous process uh, that uh, gives the impression of mural thickening and a potentially a mural mass. But thankfully, a very benign process. Uh, in fact, these are predominantly extramural. It's thought that the pathogenesis uh, is related to rupture uh, uh, of the rokitansky ashoff sinuses that extend into the uh, uh, submucosa or adventitial uh, tissues, although we don't see that in our particular case. 
This is a very common mimic of gallbladder con carcinoma uh, as it's associated with significant mural thickening, a mass effect, and even potentially extension into the liver. Uh, of note, this can on occasion be uh, positive with um, uh, PET scanning and thus raise further concern for potential malignancy. Uh, imp uh, complications can also incur such as fistulae um, or even potentially uh, a gallbladder uh, uh, bile uh, peritonitis and those sorts of uh, problems uh, later on. But generally, uh, those can be managed much more easily than gallbladder carcinoma. So that's our case, a very quick and short one. Uh, thanks for joining us on this uh, program today, xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis, our final sign out. Uh, if you like that, please uh, make a comment or share. And uh, most importantly, uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you'll catch future releases from our channel uh, on topics of uh, similar interest. We appreciate your time and uh, thank you for uh, your, your uh, participation in our program and look forward to seeing you on a program again soon.